You're watching Telecom TV from SCWS World in London and I'm joined now by David Orloff who is Director of RAN Product Introduction at AT&T. David, thanks for talking with Telecom TV again. Now you were speaking at the conference earlier about how headnets can deliver on the customer experience. How so? Well, we see uh, the customer experience and traffic uh, exponentially growing over the next several years to 2020 where we're going to need to use everything in our toolkit to provide the necessary traffic that the customer is looking for. Um, they need to do video, uh, in building, outside, in the urban areas. It, it all works together as a het net um, delivering on that performance and experience. We have programs in the outdoor space and programs in the indoor space. In the outdoor space, we're really looking at, at small cells where effectively you kind of turn the cell site on its edge. Um, you centralize uh, some baseband, um, but you put up many small cells uh, to deliver very high capacity uh, interworking with the macro network. Um, in the indoor space, we use all of those techniques Plus, we add automation in to make it uh, seamless and easy to deploy uh, with the small cells. So how is this linked into the concepts around centralized CRAN? This is the first step. We're, we're working to virtualize our, our network um, in AT&T. Uh, this is the first step with the RAN where we can centralize the baseband and put small cells up on utility poles or urban furniture or anything like that um, and not have to run expensive transport um, across town you know, back to our, our central offices. With such a variety of components, how as an operator do you ensure your network is optimized? The main technique is self-optimizing networks. Um, we have many functions in that toolkit with uh, regards to auto neighboring configurations, auto uh, PCI for, for channel usage, um, making the interference be minimized again. So with all of these new cells, they can come up on air, interact appropriately with each other, and again, provide the best customer experience. So are we seeing a combination of self-optimizing and self-organizing networks? Right, so the way that I define self-optimizing is once a cell site or cell is on air, um, that cell then works with its peers to deliver the best experience and the best uh, performance. Now self-organizing to me is on the front end where we use uh, automation tools uh, to help us deploy cells efficiently and quickly um, with the number of, of cells that we're going to be deploying, I mean, growing so large, um, you really have to have automation techniques uh, to make it cost effective and, and again, seamless. So are we seeing techniques that have been pioneered in indoors environments now moving to outdoor environments? From a self-organizing perspective, I think that you'll, you'll, you'll see it start to go outdoors. So self-optimizing actually did start outdoors. We then brought it indoors. We added self-organizing on top of it with a lot of automation. Um, and now we're actually going further with that from uh, an aspect of even customer installs for the indoor space where a customer can call up, order a small cell, have it delivered in 24 to 48 hours, uh, install it in their building, connect it up to their broadband transport and provide them service within a few days effort. Um, the outdoor space will largely continue to grow from an, organ from an optimizing perspective, may not go as far with from the organizing because it's really uh, about volume and enterprise and quantity at that point. So are we now seeing a trend for enterprise customers to order, install and configure their own indoor network components? Yeah, we, we've actually always been heading down that path from the start of our enterprise small cell portfolio. Uh, what we've done is build the product up to the point that it can be installed reasonably well. And now what we're doing is adding the automation in the background so that a customer can go into a portal, 
uh, put in their address and their, their information, order a, a small cell, up to three in fact, um, get them delivered within 24, 48 hours, and then install them in their building and connect them to their broadband network and have service. It's, it's wonderful. Now you mentioned earlier 2020. 2020 is an important date because we should then see the first commercialization of 5G networks. But as data demand and usage increases, are we seeing two tracks here? Are we seeing an evolution of our current architectures plus the adoption of a new architecture that 5G promises? No, I think this is the track. I mean, we're, we're seeing traffic ex increase exponentially. Um, I think the number that I heard from 2007 to 14 was something like 1,000%. Um, I believe it's going to grow that fast in the next few years and then even faster after that. So we're using uh, small cells, macro cells, DAS. We're using unlicensed. Uh, we're using all of our available techniques to be able to now start building that het net environment, the big all-encompassing het net that works together seamlessly to provide this level of capacity and traffic that I don't think that we can even fathom at this point. Now you're also involved with the Small Cell Forum and I believe the forum has made some announcements on het nets this week. Yes, in fact today we released uh, our release seven for foundations of the HetNet. Um, there are really two brand new documents, uh, one from the networking work group and one from the market drivers uh, from the marketing team um, that really set the stage for how the forum is gonna advance over the next while, which is uh, in regards to the HetNet. Everything is the HetNet. David, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.